Welcome. So what I want to do in this, in this video is show you what to talk about what is a dilation. And I'll go through a brief, brief little example. If we look at, let's look at three linear graphs, y equals x, y equals 1 half x, and y equals 2x. All right. Now when we look at the y equals x, this is what we call our parent graph for the identity function. It looks something like that. Right? But now, excuse me, now when we multiply by 1 half, that actually affects and changes the graph. And what we say is the slope of my graph, remember this one would be up 1 over 1. Now this is up 1 over 2. So we can say that the graph is less steep. And then over here, now we can rewrite my slope as up 2 over 1. And we could say the graph is has more steepness than originally my parent graph and the one at y half. So what's important about is we have this identity function, right? This is what we're going to start at. But when we start multiplying numbers by that, that actually affects what the graph looks like. So when we go back, now let's go and take a look at a quadratic. So this is for a linear or identity function. Now what we're going to be talking about is the dilations. And we're going to be talking about dilations with a quadratic. So let's just kind of compare the same thing. All right. So when we have our identity function, we've worked a lot with identity functions. And the identity function y equals x squared, when I create a table of values, I know I'm going to have start at 0, 0. My next point would be over 1, up 1, and then over 2, up 4. And that works on the other side by applying my axis of symmetry. All right. So what we're going to be looking at when we're talking about what is a dilation, we're going to be looking at um, how is this 1 half and how is this 2 going to affect it? Because we're not going to be talking about a slope like we would have been linear. We want to see you know, how is this graph being affected. So we can create a table of values. And I'll just actually quickly go through these table of values here for you. If I was going to do x, y, well, we know that at 0, we have 0. At negative 1 is 1. And at negative 2 is 4. At 1 is 1. At 2 is 4. So now let's just go and take a look at real quick, what would the table of values look like? if I did this for 1 half? Well, still at 0, 0, I would still, or I'm still at 0. Even if I have 0 squared times 1 half, I'm still going to get 0. But now, if I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times 1 half is 1 half. And if I plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 half is 2. So you can see that now this graph, by applying the over the axis symmetry, is now going to have different values. And when we go ahead and graph these points, what we notice is when it goes to 1, instead of going up 1, I only go half. And when I go over 2, now I go up to 1. So you can see that this graph is going to look different than the parent graph. And it's what it's going to be is it's going to be stretched horizontally. Now let's go and look at this one, last one. Let's just do a quick little table of values here. So now I'm multiplying by 2 after I square my value. So when I plug in 0, 0 squared is, is 0. 0 times 2 is still 0. But now let's do 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So now instead of going over 1 or over 1, up 1, now I'm going to go over 1, up 2. And then over 2, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And this is going to be the same way on the other side by applying my axis of symmetry. So when I look at this graph, when I go over 1, now I go up 2. And when I go over 2, now I go up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that works on the left side. So you can see this graph. This graph is going to look much different than my x squared graph. So now it kind of goes into, you know, so what exactly is a dilation? A dilation is how we're going to affect the graph either by um, compressing it or stretching it. And let's go and take a look at how is this going to be affected, or how can we always look at this? Well, when we look at vertex form, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, a is going to be our value that's going to tell us, are we going to stretch this graph, or is it going to be compressed? And the way the rule that we have for this is, if the absolute value of a, because remember, if it's negative, that's going to be dealing with reflections. If the absolute value of a is less than 1, then we have 
a horizontal stretch. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then we have a um, horizontal compression. And that means we're compressing the graph. So all really dilation is just looking at is how is our graph being affected either by a, a compression or by a stretch. And our simple rule is just taking our a value and looking at the absolute value. If it's less than 1, then we're going to be stretching the graph. If it's greater than 1, which you can see, 2 is greater than 1, so we compressed it. 1 half is obviously less than 1, so we stretch it. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's your quick little tutorial on dilation. Thanks.